Hi, I'm Martin M0 Zedema. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a low cost 6 meter delta loop on top. Right, hello, this is an introduction to the 6 metre delta loop. Um, I'm just going to go through the parts list uh, which you will need. Um, all these materials are readily available from your local hardware store. We'll just run through them fairly quickly. Um, basic piece of plywood, a half inch, uh, 10 inch square and uh, we'll form that shape later. These are standard 22mm copper pipe fittings from your plumber hardware store, B&Q, Wix etc. All these stainless steel nuts and bolts, again <coughs> from a local supplier um, which are quite easily obtainable. Very good stainless, no maintenance, no rust. Um, your standard inch and a half copper tube for the matching stub. Uh, this is uh, measured to a set length to suit your own requirements. Um, over here we've got standard two inch uh, clamps with the associated washers again from any car accessory shop or hardware store and uh, here supplied by a local fishing shop two standard three meter telescopic uh, fishing poles which we'll need for this antenna. Um, the wire we've got we need a little, one meter of a 75 amp TV coax for the matching stub and approximately 6.2 meters of 1.5 flexi weave uh, antenna wire. Uh, this is important it must be flexible and not rigid otherwise uh, we can't get the tension on the antenna. Right, now we've gone through the introduction, um, I'm going to be showing you how we achieved uh, the design of this base plate. Right, now I'm going to show you the method I used to form these adjustable grooves for the base plate using a router. Right, I'm going to route this groove and for obvious reasons this is why I didn't want you guys to uh, do it, I didn't want any missing fingers, so here we go. Right, the design of this uh, base plate I chose will become apparent uh, when we assemble it. It's uh, basically half inch plywood uh, which I've used to keep the cost down. I drowned this in uh, Danish oil overnight and then uh, once that's dry, and it takes a few days to dry for the Danish oil thoroughly, it's now got two coats of exterior grade varnish to get a nice finish and it's essential to make it waterproof for permanent outside use. These holes are pre-drilled from a pattern um, for the pivot clamps, uh, the mastic clamps and obviously these grooves to give uh, vertical adjustment uh, to the poles. Right, hi again. Uh, we're going to be making probably the most important part of the antenna, which is the matching stub. Uh, for anyone familiar with the uh, delta loop design or full wave loops, uh, full wave see about 100 ohms impedance. And what we need to do is match it down to 50 ohms impedance to suit our radio or thereabouts. And uh, I'm just going to show you the assembly of the matching stub. Right, taking our 10 inch piece of inch and a half uh, plastic tubing, uh, we, we now need to cut exactly 105 centimetres of 75 ohm coax and we need to cut 3 centimetres off each end for trimming purposes. And this is how we start off 
using the block connector here. Now I'll just run through the windings uh, and it's, it's critical to make the ends as neat as possible and tin using solder the ends of the coax. Right, having measured the correct length of 75mm coax uh, for our matching stub and you're happy that you've tinned and separated the outer and inner braid of the coax, um, we then fix the first block connector uh, to the tube approximately 2 inches down using a stainless steel screw down there to hold it to. But what's important now before we start winding the coils um, and this is made easier if you've got a vice or you may need an assistant. Uh, before we start winding the coils it's important to get a little bit of tape round here, wound tightly and that will just help hold everything in place until we wind the coils. Right, now we've uh, wound uh, the 75M coax round the former, uh, we now need to install, and there's a reason I don't fit this until the end, because we're not quite sure where the end of the cable comes along the pipe. We've already tinned this solder, so that can be popped in there like that. And uh, to make it nice and neat, uh, we want to line it up with that one, okay. And um, just with a simple drill. Now initially uh, I've just wound round uh, a small amount of insulation tape just to hold the coil in position while we do uh, adjustments etc. Um, but once we're initially happy with that and we've got all the connections tight like so. Right, that's that done. Right, this end here to, uh, is, is where the loop uh, of the antenna is going to connect and this is where uh, your feeder is going to connect. I've chosen this method with simplicity and low cost. Uh, depending on the feeder that you're using, uh, again, just separate the ends, tin them, put one side in one, uh, one and one in the other, tighten them up. And it's essential now for those guys that are setting this up as a permanent fixture at the home that this is waterproofed. Absolutely essential, especially at this point um, where the loop comes in because of water travelling down. So again, basic insulation tape or if you want to be posh, if you can get some uh, large shrink wrap and shrink wrap once the whole area apart from this bit because you want to make your connection. Uh, some of you guys may want to attach um, an SO239 base connector rather than messing about with these block connectors but I've just chosen this for simplicity and ease of use at the moment. Right, having assembled all the components that you need we're now going to assemble the base plate um, and I'm going to start by uh, putting the first pole on here on the bracket just simple goes across there like that 
on all the way to the end. Uh, in there, like so. Turn it around gently. And uh, initially, all these want to be loose fit. Don't tighten anything until the end. Just a, a turn, and, that's, and that will be fine, okay. And this one here, um, with this tightening bolt facing outwards. Turn it like so. And lock into place again, just a loose fit for now. And there we have one side of the antenna. Now we're going to fit the U-bolts uh, to the base assembly, which there are two of, which were, is more than adequate um, to secure this uh, six metre delta loop um, to any mast. And th these will take a two inch diameter mast. Um, so we just uh, thread that through there, like so. Uh, two washers to spread the load across the diameter <coughs> of the base plate. We now need to install uh, the masking stub, which we've already made up earlier. And if you remember, we want this end two inches from the top, like so. And uh, we just hold that clamp down there, like so. And again, this is nice and easy, all wing nuts, no spanners. Put the, the correct washers in situ, like so. There you go, you can tighten those up and uh, as well as being nice and easy for assembly, it's very easy for disassembly if you want to take it apart. Um, and there you have it. Right, having the base of the antenna laid down, we now need to thread the uh, driven element down one side. Um, and just nice and simple, poke it through here until um, we've got it there. And then this end in here, with the block connector on the matching stub um, just get that in there and knit that up and we're going to repeat the process on the other side and then we're away then. Okay. Right now we've got the base plate uh, and all the antenna assembled um, on our mast stub and if I just turn it around here briefly you can see how well clamped that is. I'm going to show you now how easily and why we put these grooves in the design to adjust the antenna. Um, around like that, just nip it up. <coughs> around like that. Okay. You can just get some nice tension on the antenna. And there we have it. Okay, now we're going to check using the analyzer, the SWR and the impedance, and as you see on 50.132, which is where we want to be, we've got 1 to 1 SWR and 50 ohms impedance, which is absolutely lovely for what we want. Now sporadic key, we haven't got long enough to talk about sporadic key, but it's known as the magic band for this reason. On VHF we get certain conditions. Uh, between 90 and 190 kilometers above the earth which affect the E layer um, the ionized gases up there start behaving erratically and one of the reasons it's called the magic band is because it's still not fully understood why this happens and if you can imagine clouds going through the sky these are between 50 and 100 kilometers of excited ionized gases in a random shapes that can be long and thin, that can be round, oval, any shape. And in sporadic E season, which is mainly summertime, although it will start again winter time, 
it can pop up in seconds. You can be tuning to six meters and hear nothing for all day and then just like that, the band comes alive. And believe me, I put video footage on it last week, 10 watts, the antenna was on the ground, I was talking all over Europe, 10 watts. So any of the foundation level holders who think they need lots of power or the disadvantage, nonsense.